kind of thought about the range session I had or the practice session I had the other day, day 17, where, you know, I worked out that I had a lot of wasted movement in my golf swing and I was still able to generate amazing amounts of power and speed and sometimes even more by just learning how to efficiently use my swing and preserving a little bit of my body and the effort I was putting in and all those types of things. It was um, a bit of a revelation and then I started to think about the really special golf players, the really good ones out there. Whether it's Brooks, whether it's Bryson, whether it's Tiger, Jordan Spieth, and then I think about basketballers that I've looked up to over the years. Steph Curry, um, love watching Nicole Jokic, fundamentally sound. Tim Duncan, uh, fundamentally sound. These guys have the skill, obviously, in a God-given talent. But I think when, when you look a little deeper and you look at the layers of stuff, the work that goes into curating that skill into this magic... I came up with the thought that there's magic in the mundane and that's kind of the thought for today because every time I get up to try to do one of these sessions and commit myself I go through any kind of challenge that any one of you would which is oh, I'll leave it for tomorrow or I'll, you know I can just skip today or I'll skip a couple of days and I think when I start to think about the magic is in the mundane I start to think about if I want to create amazing content, if I want to connect with more people on, on, a, on a level through my content that I want to be able to create for them, if I want to have the type of golf swing but also enjoy my golf the way I want to enjoy it and play at a level that I want to, want to eventually get to, then embracing that the magic actually happens by going through the mundane each and every time that you pick up a club and put your glove on. All right. Let's get into this workout. We've got a pretty bad storm on the way. It's about 15 to 20 minutes outside of my city or my suburb at the moment. So I'm gonna get this workout in. I generally only spend roughly 30 minutes in here most days, unless I'm in here, you know, those odd days where I just spend a couple of hours in here. So we're gonna get this workout done fairly quickly. First up, I got the speed sticks, really get those fast twitch fibers in my body firing. I think that's gonna be a real core of, no matter if I play or I train, I'm gonna start off with my speed sticks. They are my new favorite training tool or training aid. I'm seeing a lot of benefit, a lot of good things happening as a result. So I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. Um, and then I have a couple other drills that I'm gonna do. now. What I have been thinking about is actually creating a little golf journal for all my practices. So I might actually start that up and get that going maybe for tomorrow. See if I, get, I can get that design in. A lot of editing going on. All right, let's get into this speed training session. Pretty straightforward. You guys have seen this before. Um, I'm now in the second week of this, and this will be week workout number one for this week. So um, let's get going here. A couple to just warm up the back. Really focusing on interacting and pushing up and using ground force in my swing a lot more now. Instead of just swinging with my arms, you know, I talked about this yesterday, um, but it's such an important part of my golf swing. And if I want to get better, I'm just going to have to learn how to use that. Instead of, you know, just sort of floating across or on top of the surface you're hitting on, you're better off actually learning how to use and you know, really get into it. All right, so we got three on normal swings. And we're gonna start with the lowest weight here. Pretty standard training session. 
for speed, but it doesn't change. Remember, the magic is in the mundane. One. feel fast, I feel quick, I feel like I'm building up, two, one, two, three, I mean you can hear it, I don't, you know, the other thing I'm thinking is, if I can get over that one at five mile per hour on a consistent basis and kind of get up to that one 110, whether it's in the next couple of weeks or not. All right, some insteps really quick. One. Two. Three. Yeah, whether I can get it done as quickly as I need to or not. I may have to go and get some new clubs and new shafts on my clubs because the reason for that is because obviously, one, two, three. Obviously, once you start swinging over that 105 mile per hour, they generally, what I've read and what I've seen is that they do recommend going up from a stiff into an extra stiff shaft and your driver and anything else that you hit. Um, that lines up to that, so. All right, we're gonna move up a weight here. <sighs> plenty of swings in, plenty of fast swings. Let's go. One. Two. Let's go, man. That feels good. Go nuts. That's uh, one, two, three. Just go. Go all out in steps. Two, three, <sighs> opposite side, pushing now, I'm pushing 90, 95% swing here, one, two, three, <sighs> can hear my dog scratching on the door. All right, final weight, 325 grams. We're gonna go, we're gonna go as hard as we can here. I think I'll just take a 60 second break. I did see that they do recommend taking a little break, um, especially when you go up to, when you go up to the heavier weight and you're pushing, you're pushing really hard. Um, so a quick break, 30 seconds. But I still want to feel that, uh, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to feel that, uh, that sort of lactic acid building up in my body. All right. Let's go. One. Two. Three. That feels good. In steps. One. Two. Three. In steps on the opposite side.
and a couple of swings, normal swings. That will get your juices pumping. All right, we're gonna practice under fatigue today. I'm obviously doing speed training every second day at the moment, so give my body that chance to rest and catch up a little bit. So it's also a good mental test. When I do train under fatigue, um, it, it, it challenged me to do something that kind of mimics and mirrors a little bit of what you experience on the course. All right, we're gonna start off with five warm-ups. Tommy Fleetwood drills here. One. If you're new to my channel and you enjoy my content, please consider, please consider subscribing. tells me that you are getting value out of this and you know I'm going to create my content regardless of who subscribes but it's uh it's always nice to get new people joining the community I will say this uh, with recording with naturally I guess having to record my swing as a result of creating content. I'm getting so much value from being able to look back on it. And I highly recommend anyone that is trying to improve and get better, but you don't have the ability to go see a coach, that you at least record your swing. It does take effort and you will get camera shy, especially in public places. Um, but don't worry. Uh, just give it a, you know, turn, press record. Because it's either that or you continue to suffer when you golf game. So, you know what I mean? So you make a choice. Go after it, get it. All right, a few more warm ups here. Just really focus on getting that body doing what I need it to. Core, you know, this is kind of the layup, layup slash layup drill. Really, not the Tommy Fleetwood at the moment. Might hit a couple from the inside. And I'm slowly extending my swing with every shot. That was not a good impact. <laughs> now, as I start to bring out my full swing, you're gonna see some balls go different directions. But that's, you know, golf's very much about calibrating. And just sort of Okay, I need to readjust my alignment or got to slow down a little bit, transition better. So many moving parts with a golf swing. If you're able to just figure out what triggers your swing, um, which is what I work on every day. It's like what's triggering the good and the bad in my swing. And the quicker I can do that, the quicker I'll improve. All right, feeling pretty, pretty good here. Um, I'm gonna get into one of my drills, which is the tea drill. Grab two T's, create a little gate for yourself. And this is just about uh, getting that club path as neut neutral as possible and also challenging yourself to 
get your body working in the right way. And it's not, it's not easy at all. Um, you know, I'm probably going to hit this tee. I haven't done this in probably a good week or so. Not full swings. I'm just going with kind of half swings here. Straight away. There it is. <laughs> tee out of the ground. It's always a good little test. We just keep going here. It's not a bad thing because when I first started, I was hitting that outside tee very like flush. Now I'm hitting that inside tee. And that just tells me I'm coming in from the inside more, which is exactly what I would prefer. Obviously I don't want, I don't want to be coming in from the inside too much. Uh, but at the end of the day, I would much prefer that over a swing that comes over the top and hitting that outside tee. All right, I'm just gonna place the tee on the ground for whatever reason, I'm struggling. Right. Hit a few of these. Get my brain and body kind of being challenged. It's funny how a drill as simple as this will get you to naturally get your brain to react and do something that corrects swing faults. Amazing. Now, I'm not hitting them well tonight, but again, uh, I'm just thinking about the process rather than the outcome. Body's fatigued, swing speed training will, will generally do that to you. Yeah, very healy at the moment. Just gonna take a step back, see if it does anything. Yeah, that's what it was. Standing a little too close to the ball. If you're someone that strikes the heel of the club, maybe Try taking this half a step back. That's a bad, bad hit. I'm constantly thinking about quality of training rather than quantity, especially in here. Right now, I'm not hitting the T, but the quality of shot's not great. There we go. It'll come. It'll come. There it is. Great strike. I think those verbal cues, you're gonna sound crazy if you do it in public, but those little verbal things that you say to yourself do help. Take this tee away, pretty happy with the way I hit that. I'm really happy with the progress I've made with my swing, how I'm loading it in that sort of top of my back swing now. Had some serious problems. I do put a lot of that down to my improvement in mobility and focusing in on some strength aspects of my body. Oh, that's a bad swing. All right, cool. Second drill for tonight. Call this one the pump drill. A brand new drill that I'm bringing into my training routine. And it's basically taking a club to the top of the backswing dropping it into what I'm calling the slot, which is this kind of just parallel point, leaving the club just behind my hands, not too far back and not in front of them. Just want it just behind my hands, kind of in between my knee and where my hands sit. So you should see the club head right in between those two. And then 
taking the club back up for half and then hitting the ball from there. So let me demonstrate. Right there, into the slot, back up, down and through. So here it is again with the ball there, stop, into the slot, back up and through. Do it one more time so you can see it. Top of the backswing, into the slot, back up, back up. Now, the purpose of this is it's forcing me to load up into that rear leg and turn around it more. It's also getting rid of any ineffective loss of speed or movement from this point to here. And it's teaching me how to turn really effectively from this point right here to this point right here. So the most important part of my golf swing is when I hit the ball, when I make impact with it. So I'm really focusing, lasering in on the, the, the two or three movements before and after hitting the ball. So let's give them a shot. One, two. And what I saw when I did this yesterday was almost a five, six meter jump in distance. And as I'm doing this, and the reason it's called the pump drill, sorry, is that it is, you, you're kind of mimicking a pump. You're, you know, you're, you're kind of bouncing on that rear leg a little bit, causing you to interact with this ground and really load into that rear leg. Not worried about strike, I just want to get this feeling and movement down. By the way, I am sweating up a storm right now. It's hot and muggy. Okay. One thing about this is also the less of that length I can cut out of my backswing, it will help me a lot. I don't want to trim it back too much, but just a little. Okay, I've got to stay down. I've got to stay down and through. Come on. Yeah, that's okay. It's better. Come on, string. Just looking for that something to click. And we can take that away into tomorrow's session. A little bit fat, but. Getting closer. No. Okay. So just gonna reset here, back to some Tommy Fleetwoods. Find this really important for me to do if I hit a bad shot, just reset. Go back to something that's comfortable. Yep, okay, three balls. And back into the pump drill. There we go. Come on, push. Concentrate and focus. Don't worry about the outcome too much. If you're doing, if you're swinging it the same way, I'm kind of trying to forget about the impact for the moment. I just want to get this feeling down. Okay, very good. All right, three more.
went back to that bad habit. One more. Flipping the wrist. Can't end like that. Yeah, that's better. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there for tonight. Again, I'm not aiming for perfection, especially when I introduce a new drill. It's all about just getting a feel ready. You know, I did this for the first time yesterday. Second time today, it wasn't as effective as it was yesterday, that's for sure. But I'm fatigued, I'm tired. Overall, I tick boxes and it's not based on uh, the strike or the quality of the strike for tonight. What I was measuring myself on was creating that feeling and I think I did that. So yeah. That's it for today. Uh, don't forget, the magic's in the mundane. And you may think that what you're doing is pointless and useless, but I promise if you focus and set yourself some obtainable, attainable targets that you wanna to try to achieve from each session or each round of golf. And it goes beyond golf, to be honest. I promise you, you'll feel better about yourself and you'll inch little by little closer to the goals that you eventually will want and have in mind for yourself. Keep going, keep pushing through, keep finding a way, and uh, don't forget, golf is hard.